Hi students, so today we are going to take up the chapter trigonometry in this particular expert session and uh, we would be concerned with the syllabus that's covered for CBSE class 10 and we will be taking up the concepts, uh, taking an overview of the concepts and also discussing a few problems and you can also post your doubts, questions here or also to our website and we will be trying to get in touch with you and answer and respond to all your queries. So uh, let's start with what trigonometric ratios are. So the study of trigonometry basically started with the study of the three angles of a triangle because trigonometry as the name suggests is composed of three words tri, gonos and metron. Tri would mean three, gonos would mean angles and metron would be measuring. So it started with the measurement of the three angles of a triangle and then it expanded itself. So uh, when we study uh, trigonometry, there are six uh, trigonometric ratios that we are going to be principally concerned with and they are sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, cosec theta, sec theta and cot theta. Now what these trigonometric ratios are? Let us consider a triangle ABC as it's shown over here. So you have a triangle ABC which is right angle at, the, at B. In that case, if this particular angle, the angle C, if it is considered as theta, if you take it as theta, then sine of theta is the length of perpendicular divided by the hypotenuse. Now, there are three terms that you see here, hypotenuse, perpendicular and base. Hypotenuse you are already aware of in a right angle triangle, the greatest side is called the hypotenuse. Now, what is perpendicular and base? Because these two sides, AB and BC, they can be used interchangeably as a perpendicular or base. So they are the, the words perpendicular and base are essentially relative terms. They are relative to the angle that you have chosen. For example, here we have taken this particular angle as theta, this angle as theta. In that case, the side on which it rests, one would definitely be the hypotenuse. The other side is going to be called the base and the side that is right in front of it or opposite that the angle that we are considering is going to be called the perpendicular. So if theta was this, if we had taken this as theta, in this case AB would have been the, uh, the base and BC would have been the perpendicular. Hypotenuse would always remain the same because there is just one uh, longest side in the right angle triangle that is opposite to the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is always fixed but the perpendicular and the base is relative to the angle that we are considering. So you have sine theta is equal to the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse is called sine of that angle, sine of theta. So the sine that you see here, it's actually the full form of the sine is sine, S-I-N-E. The color of the pen actually changed. Let me just change it first. Okay. Now you have sine it's actually s i n e cos theta is actually the short for cosine the function's name is called cosine tan the full the complete form of it is called tangent so tan is the short form for that you have cos cosec it really means cosecant sec theta so sec actually means secant and cot means cotangent we uh, do not need to get into what exactly these are we just need to know what the ratios they stand for so when you take the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse it is called sine theta perpendicular again perpendicular is relative to the angle that you are taking okay and cos theta is the ratio of base by hypotenuse tan theta is the ratio of perpendicular by base and there are three other uh, reciprocal trigonometric ratios so the reciprocal of sin theta is called cosec theta and sin theta is p by h so cosec theta is going to be h by p similarly sec theta is the reciprocal of cos theta so if cos theta is b by h sec theta is going to be h by b tan theta is p by b so cot theta is going to be b by p Another thing that you can see here is that tan theta is equal to p by b. If you divide the numerator and denominator both by hypotenuse or h, the, the ratio will not change. But p by h is equal to sin theta. 
and b by h is equal to cos theta so you can also use this relation that tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta in some of the problems now based on the knowledge of uh, these trigonometric ratios let us see let us uh, have a look at one of the problems and see how we use it so the problem says that in a triangle abc that is right angle at b ap is equal to 5 cm so let's take a triangle first so we have a triangle that is right angle at b so this is going to be b ap is equal to 5 so let this be a so ab is equal to 5 cm and you have bc plus ac equal to 25 so if bc is equal to x then ac has to be 25 Minus x because it's given that BC plus AC is equal to 25 centimeters. Now we have to find the value of sine A, cos A, and sec C. So let's first find what sine A is. Now A is this angle, and if you remember from the list of uh, formula that we saw, that sine theta is equal to p by h. Now p is relative to the angle that you are you are choosing. So angle is this. the angle the side on which it rests is called the base and the side right in front of it is called the perpendicular so sin a will be bc by h hypotenuse is hypotenuse is ac so sin a is this similarly cos a let's first write it in the form of sides cos a is going to be b by h and what is b b is ab and h again is going to be ac now what is sec c going to be in that case this is the angle that we have to consider and sec theta is the reciprocal of cos theta so if uh, cos theta is b by h it has to be h by b but here the b is not the same as the one that we chose over here because the angle has changed here the hypotenuse remains the same so it's going to be ac but the base is going to be bc the base is relative to the angle the perpendicular is relative to the angle that you are choosing so sec c is equal to ac by bc now we need to find what x is in order to find the values the correct values of sin a cos a and sec c now we can use pythagoras theorem here and we can say that 5 square plus x square is equal to 25 minus x whole square which means that you have 25 plus x square is equal to you expand it in the formula a minus b whole square so you get 625 which is 25 square plus x square minus 50 x so the x square gets cancelled out and you have 50 x is equal to 600 therefore x equal to 600 by 50 and you get x as 12 cm and in that case you have bc is equal to 12 and ac is equal to 25 minus 12 which is going to be 13 cm so now it's very easy to find out what is bc bc is 12 and ac is how much 13 cos a is ab ab is already given to be 5 and ac we have found out is 13 here again ac is going to be 13 and bc is going to be 12 so these are the values of sin a cos a and sec c so this is how you find out given any trigonometric ratio we can find out the others or we can make use of the pythagoras theorem to find the length of the sides or the ratio of the sides and find the angle find the trigonometric ratios now there are some specific angles that you must have studied there is a formula table for this as well which will be taking up next but let's see how we study the trigonometric ratio for the angle 45 degrees so we basically want to find out what sin 45 degrees is cos 45 degrees is tan 45 degrees is and the reciprocal so you have cos sec 45 sec 45 doesn't print so you have sec 45 and cot 45 these ratios we need to we need to find out so let's take a triangle and the uh, trigonometric ratios for these uh, these angles would always remain constant so tan 45 or sin 45 that you calculate will be same as what anybody else would calculate it would not depend on the uh, on the values of the sides it will always remain a constant okay so it since it is a ratio so there is no unit to it now you have a triangle a 
BC and then this angle be 45 degrees since we are going to consider finding out we are going to uh, we are going to find out the trigonometric ratios for this particular angle let this be 45 degrees since this is 90 the other side the other angle would automatically be 45 because in a triangle sum of angles has to be 180 and since this is 45 and this is also 45 which makes it that makes it an isosceles triangle so ab will be equal to the side bc so you have sine 45 if we consider this 45 that you were taking initially it's p by h right p for this particular angle c would be ab so you have ab by hypotenuse is going to be ac Similarly, cos 45 is B by H and B would be BC here and H would be AC. And tan 45 is P by B, which is AB by BC. And cosec would of course be the reciprocal of sine. So if you find out sine, you can just take simply take the reciprocal and write it as cosec 45. So you have AB is equal to if AB is X, then BC will also be equal to X. And in that case, AC square will be equal to X square plus X square from Pythagoras theorem. So you have 2X square, AC square is equal to. Therefore, AC is equal to root 2X. We don't know what X is. That's why I said that the, that the trigonometric ratios of these angles would always remain constant. You'll see why. We don't know what the sides, length of sides of AB, BC or AC are, right? We have taken it as X. Now, AB is X and AC is equal to root 2X. X and X cancels out and we get a constant number 1 by root 2. So, the sine of 45 degrees is independent of the length of the side of the triangle because X cancels out. It always turns out to be a constant 1 by root 2. Hence, whatever be the size of the triangle, if the angle is 45 degrees, its sine is always going to be 1 by root 2. The same would hold true for all the other trigonometric ratios here because in each of these cases, the x or the unknown length of the side is going to cancel out. So you have x by root 2 x here as well. So you have 1 by root 2. So sine and cos of 45 degrees is same and it is equal to 1 by root 2 and tan 45 is p by b which is a b by b c which is x by b x by x which is equal to 1 because it gets cancelled out. so you have sine cos and tan we have already found out so cosec which is the reciprocal of sine will become root 2 sec 45 degrees which is the reciprocal of cos 45 degrees would also become root 2 and cot of 45 degrees, which is the reciprocal of tan 45 degrees, would stay as 1. So these are the various values of the trigonometric ratios for 45 degrees. Let us see a few more angles. And one of them is 60 and the other is 30 degrees. We are going to look at them together. Let's see how. Consider, a, a consider an equilateral triangle, ABC. Since we have to find it out for 60 degrees, we have considered a an equilateral triangle ABC where all the angles are 60 degrees. Now, if you remember, if you drop a perpendicular from the vertex, opposite vertex to the side, it is going to bisect. In case of, a, of an equilateral triangle, it becomes the perpendicular bisector. And these two sides are anyways equal. AB equal to AC is already there because it's, a, it's an equilateral triangle. And this is D. So if AB is equal to A, AC will also be equal to A, BC will also be equal to A and BD will be half of the side which is A by 2. Similarly, CD will be also equal to A, AC, A by 2. So in triangle ABD, what do you see? In triangle ABD, you see A square is equal to A by 2 whole square plus AD square. Right, or you can say that AD square is equal to A square minus A square by 4, which is equal to if you simplify it, you will get 3A square by 4. So AD comes out to be root 3A by 2. Okay, now what is sine of 60 degrees? 
sine of 60, this angle is 60, so sine for it will be P, which is AD in the right angle triangle, AD by H, which is AP. Right? Because sine is P by H, so it's going to be AD by AB. Now, what is AD? AD we have found it to be root 3A by 2, and AB was A. Again, the length of the side does not matter. It gets cancelled out and what you get is a simple ratio root 3 by 2. Similarly, cos of 60 is what? Cos of 60 will be base, which is BD, by hypotenuse, which is AB. Now, what is BD? BD is A by 2 and AB is A. Again, A gets cancelled out and what you get is half. What is tan 60 degrees? It is perpendicular by base, so you have AD by BD. AD is equal to root 3A by 2 and BD is how much? A by 2. So A, A cancels out, 2 and 2 cancels out, so you get root 3. So sine, cos and tan of 60 degrees is root 3 by 2, half and root 3 respectively. You can take the reciprocal to find the other three trigonometric ratios, which I would leave to you. So cos x 60 would be 2 by root 3, sec 60 will be 2, and cot 60 will be 1 by root 3. Now in the same triangle, what you see is this particular angle will become 30 degrees, isn't it? Because in a triangle A, B, D, the sum of angles of the triangle have to be 180 degrees. So you have 60, you have 90, so the remaining angle will be 30 degrees. Now sine of 30 would be how much? For this particular angle, sine is P by H. The perpendicular for this is going to be BD. So you have BD and the hypotenuse remains the same. So the hypotenuse is AB. So BD by AB it is going to be. Now what is BD? BD is A by 2 and AB is A. So sine of 30 turns out to be half. Cos of 30 is going to be AD by AB, which is, what is AD? AD is root 3A by 2 and you have A here. So you have root 3 by 2 and tan of 30 is going to be BD, which is perpendicular for 30 degrees and divided by AD. So you have BD equal to A by 2 and AD equal to root 3A by 2. A by 2, A by 2 cancels out and what you are left with is 1 by root 3. So you can find out the other three trigonometric ratios for the angle 30 degrees. So this is how you find out the trigonometric ratios of the specific angles 60 degrees and 30 degrees. Here also you see that it is independent of the length of the side or the length of the side of the triangle that you are considering. Hence the sine, cos, tan, cos x, sec or cotangent of any of the angles is going to be independent of the length of the sides of the triangle. Now we have two more angles, 0 degrees and 90 degrees. How are we going to tackle these? Now we have a triangle, a right angle triangle for that matter. And this is 90 degrees. Let this be theta. Okay. So you have A, B and C. Let this be the triangle. Now consider finding the value of sine 0 degrees. In that case, let theta be 0. When theta is 0. What is sin 0 going to be? It's going to be perpendicular, which is AB by H, which is AC. Now, what do you see here? When does angle theta become equal to 0? You go on decreasing the value of angle theta to make it equal to 0, right? If you make this particular line AC come all the way down till it coincides with the point B, is when the angle is going to become 0, right? So in that case, when the angle theta becomes, becomes 0 degrees, the length of AB is going to diminish and it's going to become equal to 0. Because what you can see here is, as you go on decreasing the value of angle theta, the length of side AB has to decrease for the constant base. So it will go on decreasing. Exactly when the angle theta is 0 degrees, a will coincide with B and in that case AB will become equal to 0. 0 divided by any non-negative number is going to be 0. Whatever be the value of AC, sine of 0 will be equal to 0 because the numerator becomes 0. AB becomes 0 when the angle becomes 0 degrees. 
what about cos 0 degrees what in in the case of cos you have base which is bc by ac now when you uh, what happens in this case in this case when the angle becomes zero a and b will coincide right so ac and bc will become the same and in that case these two will cancel out or they'll be equal to uh, they'll be equal and their ratio will become equal to one because a and b is going to a and b are going to coincide in each other so cos of zero degrees is going to be one and tan of zero degrees is p by b or you have sine zero degrees by cos zero degree if you remember tan theta is equal to sine theta by cos theta so tan zero degrees is going to be sine zero by cos zero and what is sine zero sine zero turned out to be zero cos zero turned out to be one hence this value will also be equal to zero so the sine of angle zero is zero cos of angle zero is one and tan of angle zero is zero what will be cosec cosec zero this is zero so any number by zero is not defined so cosec zero is not defined you cannot divide by zero division by the number zero is not allowed you can divide by a number which, which is very close to zero but you can never divide by a number zero so here the reciprocal will mean that in the denominator you have a zero which is not defined so the cosec of zero degrees is not defined sec of zero is going to be one because the reciprocal of one is one and for tan zero you have the reciprocal is cot zero cot zero again would mean that you have a zero in the denominator so this is also not defined you cannot define the cot of angle zero okay so this is the these are the trigonometric ratios for the angle zero what about 90 degrees now you are considering sign finding out what sign of 90 degrees is what does 90 mean 90 would mean that you go on increasing the increasing the angle how do you go on increasing if you move your point ahead if you go on moving your point ahead what happens is the value of angle theta increases until you reach this point until c reaches c coincides with the point b is when the angle theta will become 90 degrees so when theta becomes 90 degrees b and c are going to coincide on each other okay b and c are going to coincide on each other now what is sine 90 sine of theta is again ab by a ab by ac so when b and c coincide ab and ac will become equal and in that case you will get one cos of 90 degrees base by hypotenuse so you have bc by ac as you go on moving c towards b the length of bc is going to keep on decreasing and when you have b and c overlapping on each other the value of bc will become zero AC will be any non-negative number, but it doesn't matter because zero divided by any non-negative number is going is going to give you a zero. And tan 90 is going to be sine theta, which is sine 90 by cos 90. So you have one by zero. Again, division by zero is not defined. So tan of 90 is not defined. The cot of zero is not defined. Similarly, tan of 90 is not defined. Now, what about the reciprocal? So you have cosec 90, cosec 90 is 1, sec 90 is not defined because again in the denominator you will have 0 and cot of 90 is cos 90 by sin 90 since it is the reciprocal of tan so the ratio would change so cos 90 is 0 sin 90 is 1 so you have 0 so cot of 90 is equal to 0 so these are the various trigonometric ratios for the angle 0 and 90 degrees there is a table that you must memorize and uh, it will be very useful for you so you must remember all the trigonometric ratio values for these specific angles uh, from the exam perspective 
Also from learning the trigonometry uh, in higher classes, you need to be well versed with these trigonometric ratios at least. This is the particular table that I'm talking about. All the stars that you see here, it means that these values are not defined and you know how they are not defined, why they are not defined, right? So you have sine zero in the first place, you have sine zero is zero, sine 30 is half, sine 45 is one by root two and sine 60 is root three by two, sine 90 is one. Similarly, you have the various trigonometrical ratios for the special angles that we considered just now. All the star marks means they are not defined. Now, what about the powers of trigonometric ratios? When you have sine A and you square it, that is you find the square of the value sine A, you write it as sine 2A, 2 in the superscript, okay? You do not write it as sine A square. This is wrong, this is right. Sin A square is equal to sin square A. Here, it means that you first have to find the square of angle A and then find its sine, which is not the same as finding the square of sin A, okay? So sin square A, this is read as sin square A and it, it means sin A's whole square. Similar is the case with other angles, so you have sin A cube is written as sin cube A and not sin A cube. This is the wrong representation for sin A cube. This is the right expression, okay? Now, if you take the reciprocal, so reciprocal of uh, sin A, you have one by sin A, so one by A, if it is a number, its reciprocal is written as a to the power minus one in, in the power. So you would be tempted to say that one by sine a would be written as sine a to the power minus one. And since we take the power right here, so we can write it as sine minus one a. Now this is wrong. Sine a to the power minus one is one by sine a, of course, but it is not equal to sine minus one a because sine minus 1a is actually a trigonometric, inverse trigonometric ratio that you'll be studying in a higher class. So this is a, it, this is called sine inverse a. It is a different trigonometric function that you will be studying in a higher class. So make sure that you understand this for all other powers, all the positive powers, they come in between the angle and the word sine, but for minus one, it doesn't come in between. This sine minus one a has a completely different meaning than this. It does not mean this. So sine a to the power minus one should be written as one by sine a and not like this. If you see sine inverse a written somewhere, it does not mean one by sine a. It means something totally different and it's called a trigono inverse trigonometric function that we'll be studying in a higher class. All right.